Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 10th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm Jason Mackey, and this is still your untitled video where we talk about a couple different things in Pittsburgh sports, where I've been, different opinions that I might have. And uh, well, we have a lot to kick around. Before we get into maybe some David Bednar talk, some Penguins talk, our oldest Chapman, Martin Perez, just want to remind you that we're brought to you, as always, by the North Shore Tavern. If you love baseball, you'll love the North Shore Tavern. The interior is wall-to-wall pirates. There are appetizers, entrees, cocktails, and, of course, steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone. Open every day. The North Shore Tavern across from PNC Park is your home for steak on a stone. All right. So I originally wanted to do this podcast and talk a lot about the Penguins. We still are going to spend some time talking about the Penguins, but I don't know how I can't lead with baseball. I I, I really don't. The Pirates are the story right now. And I mean, frankly, the story is David Bednar, his struggles, what happened at PNC Park on Wednesday um, or on Tuesday, excuse me, and him getting booed. You guys booed the local kid who's pitching the two-time All-Star and has pitched as well as he has. I... I don't know. I I really, I've struggled with this and how to think about it. I'm very much against telling people how to spend their money, but I'm sort of telling people how to spend their money or how to act once they spend their money. Maybe that's more appropriate. If somebody is not giving full effort, if somebody is a knucklehead, if somebody is not doing everything they can to represent this city or the team or whatever with pride, go ahead and boo. If somebody dogs it, fine. David Bednar, I mean, there are very few people. I mean, there's nobody. There's nobody. That's just a canned phrase who represent the Pirates better, who have represented the Pirates better than David Bednar. He's fantastic. Every offseason, I did a story about this. He's like, where's Waldo trying to find what elementary school he's at, where he's going. A lot of his teammates do not live here. David does in the offseason. He thinks nothing of it to go somewhere and talk about things in a positive way for the Pirates. And let's be honest. Until this year, there really hasn't been a lot positive going on with the team. Bednar has not cared. He's thrilled to represent them. He's been playing up until this year on largely a terrible contract that, you know, his team controlled the financial side of Major League Baseball really working against him. He hasn't pitched well. I'm not saying he has. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying you should leave that game seeing like, oh, it's okay. They lost. He blew a save. He's a nice guy. Absolutely not. I understand being upset about it. I understand saying he needs to pitch better. He does need to pitch better. I, I don't agree in this instance with booing the guy and the treatment that he got. I don't think he deserved it. But in any case, the whole podcast and the whole you know 10 minutes or whatever is not going to be about David Bednar. We are going to talk about other things, other things from that game, uh, as well as some Penguin stuff. So, all right, to unpack this second game against the Tigers, I thought there were a couple things before I get to my column on Wednesday and, and how that came about. But Martin Perez has been absolutely fantastic, right? I'm not really breaking any news there, but I was curious how he was going to come out. Uh, hopefully you read my column the previous day talking to him about we're a good expletive team and, and a whole, whole bunch of other things. I love his personality. I love le- the leadership, what he's been about. I mean, it's like he sounds like Francisco Cervelli talking to the guy. Um, he's soon going to have four kids like Francisco Liriano. His ball moves a little bit like Liriano. I like how just – and I told him this, I I like watching him pitch because he actually pitches. He's not just throwing two pitches and chasing velocity and spin. He knows the art of pitching. And we saw it. I mean, obviously the best start we've seen out of the pirates, but he's just been so darn good and such a big thing for this team. Um, But it wasn't just, it wasn't just Martin Perez either. Um, Edward Olivares is another off season acquisition. Who's looking really, really good. They've got an interesting situation in the outfield right now. I'm not quite sure how to solve it, but you want to get Oliveras playing time, right? I think Jack Sawinski's kind of been negatively affected by it. Obviously, you're going to keep playing Brian Reynolds. What do you do with Michael A. Taylor? They've had him out, had him back in, obviously, on Tuesday. And, you know, it's just kind of a weird equation. I, I think they'll make it all work, but sometimes somebody's going to sit for a little bit longer than they should. So, all right. After the game, I wanted to hit on something that I really liked seeing from Rowdy Telez defending David Bednar. You probably saw the video out there. My colleague, Noah Hiles, did a great job in capturing it and tweeting it and basically defending David Bednar. That feeds into a Perez point that I really like. The, the vibe that this team has, taking care of one another, being positive, saying we're a good team, we don't need that stuff, and just focusing on the field, sticking together. 
there hasn't been a personality like, like Rowdy Telez around this team for a while. It's welcome. There hasn't been a personality like Martin Perez around this team, and it's been welcome. Cool things to see. All right, last Pirates topic is a role as Chapman. I saw some chatter on Twitter, and I don't, I don't have any issue with it. Again, my my disagreeing with the booing of David Bednar versus the performance stuff are different. Um, but a role as Chapman is pitched so darn good. What do you do with that? Do you maybe move him into a closer's role potentially? I'll be, I'll be interested to see if Derek Shelton doesn't go a different route with David Bednar or Rollis Chapman, the bullpen as a whole, at least while Bednar kind of finds himself and play it a little bit more matchup based. I think that's absolute. That's probably what Shelton would have preferred all along. He likes to use his bullpen that way. His good buddy, Rob Thompson, he's going to see in Philadelphia. That's how the Phillies often deploy their bullpen. And, you know, Chapman has been so good. And the point of my column was also more just how weird is it? That Aroldis Chapman used to be this like big, ugly, burly, scary dude on another team, and now and, and we hated him, right? And now he's pitching for the Pirates. And how good do you feel when Chapman's like screaming and pumping 101 past people? It's just a weird dynamic. So I sort of explored that. Hope you'll give that a read. And I think that's going to put a bow on our Pirates stuff. Again, I, I wanted to talk more Penguins here, but the Pirates just had had a pretty interesting day I, I think that's soon going to shift here some really interesting stuff happening with the penguins some meaningful hockey by the way isn't it nice to just have that back it, it, i was it was driving actually to pit football this morning thinking about that and how many people are talking about the penguins caring about the penguins i've just missed that dynamic i got a lot of it covering them and and you know the past couple of years just not not great with that but i think there's a lot of interest even if they back into the playoffs so what Man, it's going to be fun. It's a great story. And so can they do it? I'm going to be at the Red Wings game on Thursday, writing a column off of it. I can't wait to see it. I, so many intriguing issues with this team right now. I, one of them I got asked on the radio this morning about, you know, do they want to get Tristan Jari a start before the playoffs? I probably. I can't, I can't imagine Mike Sullivan would want Nadelkovic to play that many games in a row going into the postseason. I think it would top out at 13. But at the same time, don't you ride the hot hand? Don't, don't you keep Ned in there? Do you really want to use this time to go back to Tristan Jari? I, I think they will at some point. I just don't know if I see that being Thursday night. And, you know, there's just been so many things that are different about this team. When I watched them, you know, I talked about some of this in the last video, but Saturday against the Lightning, you know, Getty Malkin looked like a completely different player. And a large part of that was because of Michael Bunting and that trade and probably not enough credit given to Kyle Dubas for bringing in Bunting and, you know, it, it, it's kind of gone away from being the Jake Gensel trade to the Michael Bunting trade. But I, I really think it, this has been an issue with Malkin for a lot of the season. You need a player like Bunting to kind of help him out, puts Ricard Raquel in a better spot. I've liked what Drew O'Connor has done. Brian Rust has been absolutely fantastic. Like they're starting to get more production from other spots. Um, I still want more depth scoring by all means, but Eric Carlson's been better. Chris Letang has been better. And what does that leave you with? I, I don't know. I do think it leaves you with enough to get in the playoffs, but it's going to be a bit of a white knuckle uh, exercise to get there. And speaking of what they need to do to get in, I did want to pitch this. I really enjoyed this story from Matt Benzel, our Penguins beat writer. He basically looked at three things that would make you feel good about the Penguins getting in and three things feeling bad about that. Uh, I took some notes on it as I've been doing for a lot of this stuff, but I thought the scoring chances off of turnovers was something that was interesting. Matt wrote that in Toronto, they had eight scoring chances directly off turnovers, 14 against uh, Tampa Bay and 12 against New Jersey. They've had eight or more in five of their last seven. So, I mean, basically that's something that bunting has done a lot of um, does really well. They're, they're in on the four check and they're making it, difficult to play against them and, and, you know, getting opportunities going the other way. So uh, something that's going in their favor, the special teams battle, on the other hand, not so much. That's a little worrisome for me. The power play was a lot better um, Monday night in Toronto, certainly, but at some point it, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to hear about process puck has to go back in the, in the back of the net. PK has been a little bit leaky to me. That's the one sort of like golden goose here right? Like if something's going to push the Penguins into the playoffs, to me, it has to be the power play getting hot and winning some games for them. I, you obviously want to tighten the PK down, but it's just been such a non-threat for all of the season. And for it to get going, man, I, I'd love to see that. Um, I'm looking at this right now and obviously recording this in the middle of um, the Capitals game, but 
the Flyers look like they're going in the absolute tank, uh, just based on where we're at in the season. To me, it looks like you know the Red Wings are a reasonable threat. The Penguins are obviously in there. The Capitals will probably still be in there. The Islanders are in the mix. They're in the thir- they're third in the Metro at this point. But I mean, how do you take the Flyers seriously? How do you take the Sabres seriously? How do you take the Devils seriously? I think you're starting to see those teams weeded out, and it is crazy. It, you know, in, in just over a week, we're going to know where the Penguins stand. They finish up on Long Island, and well, there's a lot to learn between now and then, and a lot to talk about as well. I'll be back on Friday for your morning video. Make sure and like and subscribe, and you can get all the great content from our Post Gazette beat writers, columnists, and all that stuff. Thank you for watching. Talk to you in a couple of days.